Welcome to References in Binding and Parameters. Let's look at how we can build relationships between different operator families in Touch Center. To get started, let's use the tab key to open up the Op Create dialog and add a movie file in top here into our network. Next, let's right click on the output of our movie file in and add a level top. And let's also add a constant chop here to our network while we're at it. Now I'm going to use Alt N on the keyboard to add a null chop to the end of my constant chop. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to control a parameter here on my level top. So let's click on the level top and let's head over to the post page. I want to control this opacity parameter here uh, from our chops. And to do that, let's head over here to our null chop. Let's click on the viewer active flag in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to left click and hold and then drag this channel over to the parameter I'd like to target and then release that on top of the parameter I want to target. Next, I'm going to select chop reference. And we'll see now, if we click on the parameter name, that Touch Designer has actually completed an expression for us. To understand this expression, we can read this as op, the operator that we want to target, the path to the operator that we want to target, and then in this case, when working with chops, a set of square brackets with the name of the channel that we want to pull that data from. So here we can see the operator called null1 and the uh, channel in that operator called Chan1 is what we're using to control this parameter. Now, if we head back over to our constant chop, we'll see that as we manipulate uh, our value, that's gonna in fact drive the parameter here on our level top. Now, this isn't the only way that we can control parameters, so let's actually take a look at another way that we might do this. In this case, I'm gonna head over to the dat family and I'm gonna add a table dat into the network. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use Alt N again to add a null dat to the network. And I'm gonna click on table one. I'm gonna make it viewer active and I'm gonna begin by uh, typing in a name for the header of this column. Next, I'm gonna right click over here on my row and select add below. And inside of this row, I'm gonna give this a value. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna use this cell to control a parameter. So let's get, go ahead and add an LFO chop to our network. Now we can't drag and drop a cell from a table onto a parameter, but we can write an expression. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm gonna click on the frequency parameter and I'm gonna write an expression that starts with op, operator, in quotation marks, the path to the operator that we wanna pull our information from. In this case, the operator, null two. And then in a set of square brackets, I'm gonna indicate the address for the cell as a row and column. So that's one, comma zero. So this is in row one, column zero. If we hit the return key now, we should see that we've pulled this value over and we're using that to control our parameter. Let's copy and paste our LFO and let's take a look at one other way that we might be able to address a cell. So in this case, rather than actually just pointing to the index of the row and column, we're gonna use the index of the row, but we're gonna use the name of the column. So here frequency corresponds with the name that I've put here in this header column. So this lets me actually pull the information based off of the name of the column and the row index, which is a great way for us to be able to pull information from DATs into parameters. Let's take a look at another way that we might actually use some parameter expressions. Now, to get started with this technique, I'm gonna head over to components. I'm gonna add a base component to our network and let's actually go ahead and customize this component. I'm gonna right click on the operator. I'm gonna select customize component and I'm gonna add a custom parameter called my color. I'm gonna make sure this is an RGB parameter type and I'm gonna click to add bar. If we click over here on custom on the custom parameter page, we can see that we have a parameter that's been added. Now I'm gonna add a constant top to the network. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to connect all three of these color parameters, color RGB. I wanna connect them all at once over here to my custom parameter, my color RGB. So starting here on constant one, this in this case, I'm gonna click and hold right on the parameter name. I'm gonna drag that over, over on top of the operator I wanna uh, target. And then I'm gonna, uh, drag on over and then release right on top of the parameter name that I want to target and select reference. Now when I click on the parameter name, I can see that I've targeted all of those parameters all in one go. And we can see that this is a slightly different syntax. So in this case, I'm targeting a parameter 
and not actually just a channel or a cell. So here we can read this as op, the operator constant to the parameter color r is where we're pulling this information from. So let's head over here to constant two. If we click on color, we can see there's a parameter color r, color g, and color b. And that's in fact where these parameters are coming from. Now this is great. It means if I make changes over here to constant two, uh, that's going to be pushed on over. I'm going to receive that information here on my base, but it means on base one, if I change this parameter here, I'm going to break the connection between these two operators. Luckily for us, there's a way that we can actually keep that connection intact. So let's take a look at this other type of parameter mode called binding. So I'm going to start by adding a text top to the network, and then I'm going to add a text comp to the network while I'm at it. Now here on the text top, I'm going to head over to the color page. I'm going to grab font color. I'm going to drag that over to text two as a component. I'm going to head over to the font page, and then I'm going to drop it right here on font color. And this time, instead of selecting reference, I'm going to select bind. Now we'll notice that the color for these expressions is different. In this case, we have this purple color as an expression. And if I click on uh, the parameter here, we'll see that this parameter mode is set to bind and or instead of over here, set to expression or reference. So this is great. This is the same syntax, but what's great about a bind uh, expression instead of a reference is that binding works both directions. So for example, if I go and change this color here on text two, that information is going to make its way back over to text one. And if I change that here on text one, that's going to make its way back over to text two. Now what's even better about this is I can copy and paste my text component. And now we can really start to think about how my text one top holds all of the style information for all of my text components. This means if I make a change here on text one, uh, those changes are going to make their way to both of my text components. Let's take, away, take a look at another way that we might use binding. So I'm going to go ahead and add another base component to my network. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the customized component dialog. Now I'm just going to leave that open for one second because we're going to use a different type of technique here. I'm going to add a movie file in top here into my network. And then I'm also going to go ahead and right click and add a level top here in my network as well. Now here, let's go ahead and take a look on base two. Let's add a parameter called invert. I'm going to make sure that's set to be a float type parameter. I'm going to click add par. And here on base two, let's click here and let's drag that over to level two. Let's find that invert parameter and let's drag drop it right here on the parameter we want to target and select bind. So this is great. This works just like we might expect. And we can see that we can make changes here on level two, or we can make changes here from our base two, and both of those parameters update. Now, what happens if I have a parameter like brightness? So I'm going to go ahead and make a new parameter here called bright. Now, this is also going to be a float. I'm going to select add par. Here for base two, I'm going to take bright, I'm going to drag it on over to level two, and I'm going to drop it on this brightness parameter and select bind. Now this works just the same way, but I can see that there's something that's just a little bit different. So here on level two, we'll see that this brightness parameter goes all the way up to two and it goes all the way down to zero. And its default value was actually all the way up here at one. So how can I change the range here for this parameter? Because here on base two, I can only go from zero to one. Well, it turns out here when we're customizing, our parameter, we can actually set a default. So let's give that a default value of one. Let's say that the minimum is at zero and our maximum is at two. This is going to make sure that our parameter here now matches. Now this is pretty great. I like this a lot, but there's in fact an even easier way for us to set this up. So let's take a look, for example, here with our gamma parameter. So starting here on level two, I'm actually going to grab that parameter and I'm going to drag that back on over to my component editor and release it. Now I'm going to select bind new par as master. Now that's going to go ahead and fill in the expression for me here. So I don't have to worry about it. And it's also going to go ahead and make sure that my defaults, my min mid range, and my max range are all set up for me on my custom component and match the parameter that I've pulled from. There are lots of ways that we might use uh, bind expressions and references in our networks. And this is just the tip of the iceberg.